Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I guess I'm starting a new Glenn Applications program, just like I did with Super Heavy, I guess Fair's Fair. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be getting a new Glenn launch during this month, fingers crossed, knock on wood, whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is another thing that's going on right now that we can use. And I'm more future looking than past looking. I know people always want mashups with old hardware, but I'm not really leaning into that. Well, okay, the shuttle is old hardware. But uh, yes, uh, mostly I'm interested in new hardware. And, uh, you know, the shuttle's not that old. Uh, the shuttle was ahead of its time, let's put it that way. So here we have, of course, the shuttle with ex its external tank and the new Glenn first stage as boosters. So, yes, uh, people have been suggesting using Super Heavy as the external tank and then Falcon 9s as boosters. None of that is good. That, that's just horrible. <laughs> so let's just enumerate the ways where that's horrible. Um, first of all, the Falcon 9s are not producing that much thrust. Well, certainly not as much as these. And the Super Heavy is way too big. It, it is 9 meters, and then it's carrying denser fuels, you know, with the methane instead of the hydrogen. So it basically is the case that you can't fit enough engines on the shuttle uh, to use the fuel in the Super Heavy. Therefore, you need to have engines on the Super Heavy, and that's just defeating the purpose of the shuttle, which is to carry the engines back and uh, something that the Soviets did not apparently understand. Uh, so we don't want to do that. And of course, we will be carrying the Super Heavy and those engines at the bottom of the Super Heavy all the way to orbit. And uh, we can't reuse that unless we want to do smart reuse, which like, okay, you're going to bring ULA into this. So yeah, I, I don't like that idea of putting Super Heavy in the center. And if you have Super Heavy in the center, having Falcon 9s as boosters, they're tiny. They're really tiny. So you might as well put some New Glens as boosters, more like it. Uh, so here we have, you know, New Glen. Uh, these actually have about the same thrust as the SLS boosters, so that's nice. So they're more like five segment boosters instead of four segment boosters, that kind of level of thrust. And they last longer. So, uh, well, the one problem with this whole deal is that they're also really big. <laughs> so that's a bit awkward. That, oh, and they're tilted out a little bit, aren't they? Okay, maybe that's better. All right. Still, it looks weird and horrible. Uh, you, some people may, might not have realized how big the first stage of New Glenn is. Now, some of that is room for the engines of the next stage, right? That's the inner stage up there. But yeah, it's big. But but that's a good thing, right? In a way, it means that we can carry more to orbit. So how much can we carry to orbit? I think 70 tons. So basically, oh, that's not good. Uh, so basically the same idea as with the Super Heavy at the bottom and then the external tank and shuttle at the top of it. What that did was 70 tons to orbit. This can also do 70 tons to orbit. So basically the two new Glenn boosters can replace Super Heavy. And we are still going to save the fuel for their return. Uh, we'll save about 10% of their burn time in order for them to land on a drone ship. At least they don't have to do a return to launch site thing. So they don't need as much fuel to be saved in order to have reusability, and that's good. And I'm just going to use my shuttle launch script in order to control this. So let me... Well, unfortunately, that's not popping up, so I have to go outside and come back in. But we'll double check that we have 70 tons of payload, and then we'll go. Well, it's still not letting me open the bay door here. The UI is glitched out and I don't know why. That might require a restart. Hopefully I can launch without that. But anyway, uh, you'll have to trust me. It's 70 tons. I'll try to demonstrate that outside. We have a 70 ton tank of avgas in there. Well, if you know the density of avgas, uh, we have 92.8 kiloliters there. And this is how this looks on the pad. The nose cones are just procedural tanks, in fact. So that is very simple. And I'm going to let my KOS script control this. Thankfully, it is very malleable. Shuttle NG. That's all I've got for it now. All right, here we go. 
It has a very low thrust to weight ratio initially. New Glenn itself would have a very low thrust weight ratio initially, so that's just how it is. Are they leaning in now? Maybe I should have auto strutted them more. Now when I say 70 tons to orbit, that's not including the shuttle itself, of course. The shuttle should be considered payload in terms of being a crew capsule carrying 8 plus a service module. Plus fairings, I guess. There is another option. We could replace the external tank with another new Glen, and that should be about the right right size to feed some methane engines, some BE-4s presumably, on the tail of the shuttle. We would like maybe five of them, four or five of them. But we wouldn't need the engine skirt or the landing legs or any of that business. I didn't put the side fins because we'd have to tilt them in a very particular way to avoid the one closer to the shuttle hitting the shuttle wing. Or, you know, we'd have to tilt it outside and have the other one on this side. It'd be particu particular and not really super relevant to this test since I'm not going to land the boosters. We're gonna reserve the fuel for landing the boosters, but I'm not gonna actually do it because I don't have a drone ship. Okay, well, that's how it looks at this point. They'll go for three minutes. Alright, there they go. Mercifully not doing something weird. A little bit less than three minutes. And did not hurt the shuttle in any way. I don't know how exactly they would do things after that. Perhaps someday we'll find out. Alright, we have rolled over. Well, at least right clicking on the orbiter works now. I don't know why it didn't work in the VAB, but. We are okay. Okay, getting close to orbit. Let's see how much we have left in the external tank so that we're not underdoing it. Like 70 tons is not too little and we could be carrying more. But I think we're getting pretty close to done with the fuel here. Residuals are 0.69, interestingly enough. 0.69%. And that's a little over 1% right there of the oxygen left. Okay, avoidance maneuver. Okay, little door is closed. Alright, then the OMS engines have to bring us to full orbit. That is a lot of work for them. After all, it's... Uh, 70 ton payload inside, nearly doubling the shuttle's mass. Okay, OMS engines have started up. External tank is still in view there. Alright, well, if we keep the payload inside, uh, we only have 205 meters per second, but we are definitely not going to be trying to bring down 70 tons. That it cannot do. Uh, it can bring 70 tons up, but not 70 tons down. Uh, after it lets go of the 70 tons, it'll have plenty, 388. It could even go to the uh, space station. We were carrying the docking port up there. So, that's how the shuttle works with New Glenn boosters. And I prefer that over the Falcon 9 boosters, personally. We'll have to see about the whole Methalox conversion, a full New Glenn uh, shuttle, or Blue Origin shuttle. But that will be for a later time. I'll just keep it to this configuration for now. 
and there will be other nefarious things happening with New Glenn as well. So for now, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.